welcome back to my channel or if you're new here welcome to my channel my name is Kim I am a first year fourth grade teacher in West Michigan and I did my first sit down type video on this channel a little while back and it was advice for student teachers and in that video I mentioned that when I was at my interview I had an electronic portfolio and I had no idea that everyone was gonna end up being so interested in that electronic portfolio but ever since I posted that video I've gotten texts from my friends who are still in the ed program who saw that video I've gotten emails I've gotten DMS on Instagram like so many people have been asking me about the electronic portfolio so I thought today I would go ahead and sit down and just kind of talk you through my electronic portfolio what I used and just kind of give you some tips and tricks so if you're not subscribed already please take a second to subscribe right now and turn on that notification bell to hopefully get notified whenever I post new videos so when I've made my electronic portfolios I make them using a combination of PowerPoint and Google slides now you could do this entirely on Google slides you do not need to use PowerPoint at all however I am kind of like a font snob and I like things to look really pretty and I'm very comfortable with using PowerPoint to do that so that's why I end up designing everything in PowerPoint first and then I move it over onto a Google slide by just simply copying and pasting what I have now you can get really fancy with an electronic portfolio and you can make it so it links to different parts of the portfolio which I did for my interview or you can make a really simple one where it's just like a normal slideshow and you just click through I'm gonna start with the beginner one first and then I'm gonna go into the other one okay guys so I'm gonna start by walking you through a portfolio that I made most recently this is for my professional portfolio that I'm required to have as a teacher who's being evaluated this year so I just had to make a really simple one with a few different aspects that I needed to touch upon this is in addition to all of like my professional development hours and stuff that I needed to have as a first-year teacher as well um, this was just one of the things that I had to do per my district requirements so you'll see the cover page just has my name professional portfolio and then the school year and then if I scroll through um, one of the sections that I needed to have was a reflection on my teaching this year so obviously don't just copy what I am saying because I'm sure you can come up with something much better um, but what I did on here is you can see I kept the same background that I had on the original slide just so it stays nice and coherent and then I have um, my title a certain way and then my text and a photo I think whenever you can add photos try to add them make sure you have permission to use the photos that you include though so if you have pictures in your student teaching with the children make sure you have a permission form specifically from the children's parents so that way you are able to actually include that in your portfolio all right so the next section that you're gonna see is professional community so this was another aspect that I had to include in my portfolio um, so I just touched on the different um, committees that I was on throughout the school year as well as some like PLCs I attended and whatnot um, I did block out my district name right here just so you didn't see that and then my school name over there um, but just some things that I've done throughout the school year and then again another picture so just quickly I'll walk you through it from the beginning I'm not gonna spend too much time on each tab but basically this is what this portfolio looks like and this is one that's really really easy to make so let me walk you through how you would make something like this so you're going to start with your new slide like this so yours will look fresh and clean just like mine does then the first thing you want to do is choose a background so you can just go to google and search for whatever type of background you want i like to do mine really nice and clean so i always use a shiplap like this or i use like a wood background or whatever but you could search literally anything you could search black and white pattern background or just like blue background or whatever if you want it to just be like one single color, you could also go to the shapes tab right here, click that, and then just make a rectangle. Click on your rectangle, do shape fill, and then just make it whatever color you want. Probably not that ugly color, but maybe like you want it pink. That's not super professional. So how about blue? See, there you go. Great. So you could start with this. So we'll make it really, really plain and simple. We'll just do this blue background. Otherwise, you could do shape fill picture and then search for whatever picture on your drive so I might type in shiplap background and then I have my shiplap backgrounds there so there you go if you want to shape outline you could do a shape outline as well um, but obviously you don't need to do that then you need to decide if you want to just write right onto this background like add your text on here 
or if you want a little box like this to kind of separate your text from your background. So it's up to you what you decide to do. If I write right on my background, I could say um, my cover might say your name here. I'm going to drag that where I want it. I am going to use a KG font. This is a free one you can get off defont.com. Okay, your name here, and then I'm going to put electronic portfolio. I think it's harder to type when you guys are watching. That must be it. I'm usually not too bad at typing. <laughs> so I could have it say that. Okay, and then that's my first slide there. It's done and I can go on to the next one. When I make my next one, what I do is I hold the one that I just made. I hold, well, I'm using a Mac, but you would do Command C on a Mac or just copy it, right click, copy, left click, paste. Is that right? Right click and left click. I don't know. I'm using a MacBook. But anyways, <laughs> um, I would just paste it. So then you already have your fonts that you've been using. So you can stay consistent throughout the portfolio. And then your background is the same as well. So maybe my first slide is going to be um, student teaching placement. Okay. And I want the font to fit within the window, so I'm going to change my font to 70. Let's see if that fits. Nope, not quite. So how about 60? It's a lot of trial and error. The other thing that you could do is you could copy this text, paste it, and then you'll see there's this little box right here. Click on that and put paste as picture. And then what you can do is manipulate it that way instead of changing the font every single time. Now the bad thing with this is no matter how many times you click it, you're not gonna be able to edit the actual text itself because now it's a picture, not a text box. So you could do that though. So I'm gonna have student teaching placement be the name of this slide. I'm gonna center my text. And then here I could say I, or I would say maybe student taught at, uh, what's a really generic school name, maybe, Jefferson Elementary. I feel like there's like a million Jefferson Elementaries. Jefferson, let's change the font size. Jefferson Elementary in a kindergarten classroom. Okay, there's number one. Now, instead of doing that bullet point like that, I could also highlight all of my text and then press the bullet point right here. Um, and then I might want to say classroom makeup had um, 28 kids total with 12 ELs. Okay, maybe I want to include that. Um, experience using maybe journeys, ELA curriculum, and envision math curriculum and blah -dee -dah, blah blah like whatever you want to put there just put it there then what you want to do is insert your picture so how I do this is I just go to my finder um, like desktop and then I just drag the pictures in um, you could also do insert probably and get picture yeah from file um, but yeah just insert however many pictures you want I'm just gonna steal this one of Kim Bearden and I because we love her and so normally when you drop it in Let's say it looks like this. Well, you'd want to resize it just using the little side right there for whatever size you want. And then I always do an outline on it as well just because I think that that looks nice. So there's Kim and I. We'll pretend that that was in my student teaching placement. Maybe she was my mentor teacher. Oh, my gosh. Can you even imagine? I would die. Um, <laughs> but anyways, so there's that. Okay. So you're going to just keep doing this for whatever slides you want, whatever, like however many you want, whatever the topics are, like you choose, doesn't matter. Like you have the whatever content you want in there. Then what you're going to do is you are going to, when you're ready, copy the whole thing and then you're going to paste it into Google Slides. Now that I've made my entire PowerPoint, I'm going to go to Google Slides and I'm going to drop it into Google Slides. So what I'm going to do first is I've started a new presentation, obviously. And I'm just going to erase whatever is already in my presentation. And I'm going to name it um, Kim Mock Portfolio. But you would name it like your first and last name, Electronic Portfolio. 
Now you guys are going to think I'm kind of silly, but it's fine. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make my background separate from what I just made in PowerPoint. I just like doing it this way. Um, this is the way I've always done it. I don't really know if there's a good reason why I do it that way, but I do. So I'm going to start by uploading my shiplap background. Oh, it disappeared. Shiplap. So here's my shiplap, shiplap background, and I'm just going to stretch it to fit this shape right there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy that slide and I'm going to paste it a bunch of times. So now I have a bunch of blank shiplap pages to work with. Yours, again, remembers whatever background you want it to be. It doesn't matter. Now I'm going to take what I just copied from my PowerPoint and I am going to paste that into my Google Slides. Now you'll see on here it's pasted as a picture, so you can't edit the font on there. That's why I said if you want to make it in Google Slides entirely and you don't need these fun, pretty fonts, like you can do that and that's fine. I would just double click and instead of like dropping it in, I would do your name here and now it's a text box that I can use instead. So you definitely could do it that way. Don't feel like you have to do it in PowerPoint and then drop it in because it is really just an extra step that you don't really need to do. I just like to do it because I think it's easier to use PowerPoint and it looks prettier. So I'm just copying and pasting in all of my slides like that. So that is how you do a really basic portfolio. So then what you would do is just press share. Right now it's on private. So what I want to do is get shareable link. I want to go to this one right here, which is anyone with the link can access. You don't want to make it public on the web and you don't want to make it just for people like in your school district or whatever. So anyone with the link can view, you copy it and then you just share it. So um, if I were you, I probably wouldn't share it as a whole big link like this. I would turn it into like a QR code and then print that out and put it on my uh, like staple it to the front of my resume or put it on my resume itself. Um, but yeah, I probably wouldn't type out this big log link. You could also do like a bit.ly so it's shorter. Um, yeah, but I wouldn't <laughs> probably do this big log link if you could help it. But anyways, I hope that was enough information that if you want to make a nice and easy one, now you can. All right, guys. So now you are seeing my actual electronic portfolio from when I got my job. So this is something I prepared before I had my first interview. What I did is I shared this as a link and then I turned it into a QR code and on a fun, bright colored piece of paper, I stapled it to the front of my resume and I made sure I, I mentioned it before I left my interview. I gave each person in my interview a copy of my resume with the electronic portfolio uh, QR code as well as link stapled to the front. And I just mentioned to them, like, make sure you watch it in present mode because it's interactive. So this is what they saw. And when I got home, I opened this up on my laptop and immediately I saw that they were all watching or like looking at my electronic portfolio because it will tell you like if there's people on it on the top, you know. And so anyways, they told me later at like different interviews that it really made me stand out as a candidate and they learned a lot more about me more than they could learn in the original interview. So I think that this is definitely one of the reasons why I got my job. I got the very first job that I ever interviewed for and it was in the district that I graduated from and I wanted to work at like the district I live in. So pretty cool. So first I have my cover page or my cover just like I did on the easier version. Uh, this background looks a little different than my shiplap one because I hadn't gotten into my farmhouse phase yet. Um, but yeah, just something really like basic and generic. Then I have a menu. Now this has everything that is mentioned in this uh, slideshow. When you are in present mode, you can actually click each of these as a button and it will bring you to that slide, which is pretty cool. Then in here, I had to cover a lot of stuff up because it's like personal information. Um, but what I did is on the left, I included my resume. So you can actually click it and it will bring you to my resume uploaded onto Google Drives. Then it says click below for reference letters from. And I have like, I think six people listed right here. Um, I have their name and then I have their title. And if you click their name and their title, it will bring you to their reference letter. Over here, I have my cover letter. And same thing, if you click on that, it will bring you to my actual cover letter uploaded onto Google Drive. Also, I included down here a little button that says return to main menu. If you click that, it will bring you back to the menu right here. Then on the next slide, I have my get to know me. 
Again, I had to cover up quite a few things on here because, like I said, I actually work in the district that I graduated from. So I included that I graduated from this district. I recently moved back into town and I live right next door to one of the elementaries in the district. Um, right here is a picture of me in high school, like all decked out for spirit week and all like of my school colors and stuff, just showing that I was like active in school and I, you know, am proud to be back at the school that I graduated from. Then I have engagement and utilizing curriculum. You can kind of read through that if you'd like to. Again, that little button at the bottom on every slide, lots of pictures because you want to include as many pictures as you possibly can. On this one, I had some pictures of actual students, and I do uh, have a note right here that says photos used with permission. You definitely should have a note about that, and you should make sure that you have permission to use the photos that you're including. Then I have a slide for differentiated instruction, PLs in the classroom, at-risk learners, and progress monitoring. So those are just some buzzwords and things that I had learned a lot about in college that I wanted to include in my portfolio. So now I'm gonna talk about how you can actually link to the different pages. So what you're gonna do is you are going to select the type, okay? And then what you're going to do is insert link. Now, when you go to insert link, see how I press this? I press this link button right here. Um, right now it's already going to one. So what I can do is slides in this presentation and then I select which slide I want it to go to. So in this one, it's slide three and I press apply. Now, when I click this text, it's going to bring me to that slide. On here, if I want to have it go to a Google Drive file, then I type in let me do my remove link so I can show you. I go there, press insert link, and then paste the link that I want it to go to, the Google Drive link. So I would just paste that in there, press OK, and then that's where it would go. So really, really simple, and it makes you look a lot more tech savvy than you really have to be. And it's just like a nice little extra way for people at interviews to get to know you even better. Another quick note about that, I'm going back to my like really simple slideshow to show you this. Um, but if you pasted everything in as one document like this, so mine is all just pasted in as one image now, um, then your menu isn't going to have like the inherent little um, text box things in it where you could just click that and do insert link. So what you would have to do is go to shape and then just put it around the part that you want there to be a link to. And on here I would do uh, transparent transparent so you can't see the box anymore but then I can do that link to on there and have it be to whatever slide so you do have to do that if you want it linked to like a different slide and it's all one big block then you have to insert those little transparent squares or rectangles or whatever shape so that way when they click that area then they get moved to that slide or to that link. So I really hope that this helped you out with creating your own electronic portfolio. Definitely let me know in a comment below if you have any additional questions or anything that I can help you out with. And maybe I could post like an Insta story about it or something on my Instagram. If you're not following my Instagram already, definitely go check that out. I've been really mindful about trying to post a little bit more on there and giving some teacher tips on there as well. I actually just hit 3,000 followers on my Instagram, which is really exciting. I just hit that last night. So I would love to have you come join me on Instagram, especially if you are a teacher. I love following other teachers as well so if you have your own teaching Instagram go follow me but then also put it in a comment below because I would love to go follow you if I'm not already I follow a ton of people and I seriously feel like I get the best PD from Instagram like it's crazy remember that you guys are incredibly beautiful and loved and I will see you guys next time bye guys